Thomas Arena, Madison Square Garden here in New York City as the St. John's Red Storm take on 24th ranked Xavier. Hello, everyone. I'm Brian Custer alongside Donnie Marshall. And I'll tell you, Donnie, we should see some explosive yeah. guard play here tonight. Both these teams are powered by the backcourt. Yeah, when, when you look at St. John's, you understand to have a young backcourt that is as explosive as they are, it, it tells you a lot about what's going to happen in the future, what can happen in the future. Got to have some patience. On the other side, big guard, 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, Lewitt, Sumner, NBA bodies. It's, it's interesting. You got two little guys on the right. Two big guys on the left, going to be a fun one. All right, let's get right to the starting lineups. They're brought to you by Jeep Grand Cherokee. And the Red Storm, they're powered by their fabulous freshmen in that backcourt. Marcus Lovett and Shamori Pons. Meanwhile, Xavier with their backcourt back as well. Edmund Sumner. And how about Trayvon Blewett? Blewett, the second leading scorer in the conference. Our officials. For tonight, Ed Corbin, Doug Shaws, and Gary Prager. The Musketeers of Xavier control the tap. They're in the traveling black. Red Storm in the home white. And automatically, Xavier going to the size down low. Sumner back to the basket. Starting to see that a little bit more as we progress into Big East play. Got to use that size. Great call by Chris Mack out of the gates. Sumner, the second leading scorer for Xavier. He averages about 15 a game. Shot clock inside the Yahweh. He turns and short. It's a tough spot to put your big fella in. Well, there's the leader of Xavier, Chris Mack, in his eighth season as head coach. He's already second on Xavier's all time wins list. Now, for St. John's, you can't throw the ball inside with two seconds to go. You got to get something. They're going east to west. You got to get something going to the basket. Try to put some pressure on that D early. Jura drops it down. Tyreek Jones couldn't finish. That one's knocked away, but they're going to call a foul on Trayvon Blewett. Chris Mullen in his second season as head coach of the Red Storm. Only current Division I coach to be inducted into the Hall of Fame as a player. I like how relaxed he is before the game. We went back there to talk to him. He looked like he was getting ready for the game. Had sweats on, <laughs> pulled up to his knees, sneakers. One sock up, one down. Ellison, he's been hot of late. Misses the three. And that's probably what you don't want if you're St. John's, is a jumper from the outside. That's what Xavier expects. They want you to try to beat them over the top. Let's get right to the keys to success. It's sponsored by SoFi, offering smart solutions to help you reach your financial goal. Pretty easy for Xavier. You just have to, you have to rebound as a team. Gang rebounding, we call it. Be aggressive on the road. They have the size. And then on the other side, it can't just be about the guards. It has to be all five guys on the floor for St. John's getting something done. J.P. McCura knocks down that shot. Xavier is up 4 nothing, and Levent just turned it over. And these are those starts that Chris Mullen wants his team to kind of to bounce back from. This is about maturity. How do we start the game on the road? You got a good crowd in here. No more games at Carneseca. You're at MSG the rest of your home games this season. So let, let's show what we have. And they have it. Just got to start the right way. Hey, it's a big game. You, they've got about 20 recruits here as well in, in attendance. That shot is blocked by Bashir Ahmed. Got to love his energy. He's all over the place, can guard every position if you need him to. Yahweh got that one. Better offense. I love those slip screens, the pick and rolls. They're, they're tough to defend at this level. Not a lot of teams know how to defend a pick and roll or a slip screen. Sumner drives. Got the bucket. I just, I like the movement better. The pick, the roll, under control, finish. Get your big guys involved earlier. Not at the end of a shot clock. And 
thought that was pretty good position from our angle. I'm still, you know, as good a job as our college officials do, I'm still confused at what's a, a charge and what's a block. <laughs> from game to game, I, I really, you know, it's just when you think you got it figured out. And I'm not so sure the refs don't think the same thing. Three point play by Efton Sumner. That well, was going to consume the Yahweh. 7 5 early lead for Xavier. They're going to call that one on the ground. Another year or two. That continuation will work for him, but that's a good, another good play. You saw the slip screen from the right side of the floor. I think you keep running until Xavier shows you they can defend it. Here's the steal by Jones. Second turnover for the Red Storm. Here's the drive, spin. Missed it was Bernard. Another turnover by the Red Storm. Here comes Sumner. Blew it. He put up 40 against Cincinnati in their last game. And such a good scorer, has great size. Chris Mack really allows him to, to step out, and he's got the ultra green light. You just like to see him get some easy buckets earlier than starting from out to in. It's, it's the same way you warm up as a player. You start in close, you move out, you move out. You got to start those games the same way. I think that's what he did against Cincinnati. That basket becomes bigger and bigger. Cura picked up that foul. Here's Lavette. Pull up, pop from the baseline. Got it. So good. One, two dribble. Pull up. I don't know who's better, Lavette or Pons. I mean, they're both so terrific at it. Three point lead here for the Musketeers. Makura pulls up from the foul line, knocks it down. Uh, Makura about 6'6. Six, six. Pons. 6-2-ish, maybe on a good day. There's a size advantage. Even if it's not in the post, you can shoot over the top. There's Pons. You don't want a foul of shooters, especially from that range. That's the second on Malcolm Bernard. Well, the Johnnies, they know how to score. If they're not giving the ball away, they know how to put it in the basket. Two dribble pull up by Marcus Levette, and then the size advantage, Makura over Pons, a nice little mid-range jumper. Xavier up, nine to four. Big East College Hoops on FS1. It is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Here's a look at the current Big East standing. Villanova, boy, they got a buzzer feeder win today over Virginia. They're at the top of the conference. Xavier's right there in fourth. And how about St. John? Just a game under 500. You know, this is the best record that St. John's has had at the midway park point of the conference season since the 2012-2013 season. And right now, Red Storm down five. 24th ranked Xavier. It really is that the meat of conference play. You start to see teams coming really out of the bottom if you think of the, the the basement of the Big East Marquette two big wins lost one yesterday but two really good wins beat two top ten, ten teams and in, in within a week Georgetown last night I was actually at that game uh, at Butler knocked them off played great St. John's has an opportunity here to try to get to 500 it's a great time of year for for conference play and, and I think coaches are aware of that as well you know, trying to get to that 10 wins or as close as you can and then have momentum going into the biggest tournament. Pons knocks down those first two free throws. He'll shoot three. He is ninth in the conference in scoring. Averaging 17 a game. I think the, the task for he and Levette in this game is to understand when to shoot, which they can't every time. But more importantly, understanding when to get your teammates involved, when to make the extra pass. Xavier expects those two guys to just go out here and be jump shot happy. You got to prove them wrong with your play. There's a steal by the Red Storm. It's Ellison. Ahmed. Oh, Ahmed has to take it away. 
just nowhere to go. Good defense there by Xavier clamping down, knowing that he's going to be aggressive trying to get to that rim. And they're going to call a carry on Sumner. Second turnover for Xavier. That's six turnovers total and six made field goals. <laughs> you know, each team, are, they're playing for different reasons. One trying to get to 500, one trying to stay away from 500 yeah, in conference play. And Chris Mack's team is one and five on the road, so this is a, a, a big game for them to just, for their own confidence, as, as well as the record. And if you want to stay in the top 25, these are the games you, you got to win the games you're supposed to win. Yeah, absolutely. And on paper, this is one of the games they're, they're supposed to win. When you look at Xavier, especially what they did last season, they had like six series sweeps. They're trying to finish the series sweep because they beat the Red Storm earlier this month by 15. They want to conclude the series sweep here with a victory. You know, this they've taken some lumps here lately, but you look at the teams they've lost, who all of them were right. The Creighton, the Villanovas, Butler. That fouls the Yakwe, that's his second. He's going to have a seat. Tariq Owens comes in, and he's been Mr. Energy. See, now this is the stage of the game. You know, six minutes in, I think the officials are a little bit too involved, Cus. You know, those are, those are, you can call those every time if you want. And we could be in there three hours if you call every touch. You, know, you gotta kind of got to let guys play through that if there's no advantage game. That's, that's critical because that's the second on Bashir Ahmed. So Ahmed's, Ahmed's got two. Yahweh's got two. And look at the one-hand sledgehammer by Edmund Sumner. Well, just a good job switching sides of the floor. And Sumner using that 6'6 frame and length. He a straight line guy. He's got seven. Hans drive gets it. Switch hands on him, Shamori. It's so special. You never talk about his size because he plays like a bigger player. Here comes Sumner again. Left hand lays it in. Tell you what, there's a lot of things in basketball today you have to have. Maybe a little floater. You got to be able to dribble with both hands. But to be able to use both hands around the basket is so important. Ahmed, nice pull up. Oh, it's going to come down to St. John's trying to get stops. Well, the last few plays, they just, their defense is, is not communicated the right way that Mullen wants them to. You got you to stand up in front of somebody. Quinton Gooden has checked in the game. Here's a pull up by Blewett. A lot of great mid range players in this game. Blewett, Levette. Ahmed showed you one. Hans. Seven minutes till the half. Hans drives, lays it in. Just so good at changing speeds, turning that corner. In the post, Rasheed Gaston. And they're going to call the foul on him. It's his second on Gaston. I love this. When you recover late, great players, <laughs> they know how to make you pay for it. Owens can't get there quick enough. Take a listen to this. Even the home crowd respected it. Just so good. The challenge, I believe, for an Edmund Sumner is how, can he make his teammates better? He's a terrific player, but can he set guys up the way, you know, a guy a few years ago, D. Davis did for Xavier, Miles Davis did. At 3 2 strong by Pons. Gooden going one on three with the left hand. Trayvon Blewett. Well, that's what I like to see from, from Trey Blewett. Get into the basket in transition. You can shoot a jumper anytime you want. Keeping that pressure on the D, getting to the rim, so important. Setting the tone for your team on the road. Here's Ellis. Xavier, four-point lead, 17-13 over the Red Storm. Trayvon Blue, it's getting warm.
beautiful, cool night here in New York City. You're watching Big East College Hoops here on FS1. 24th ranked Xavier taking on St. John's. Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up the National Alliance on Mental Illness and their commitment to improving the lives of families and those living with mental illness. Learn more about how you can be stigma free by visiting FoxSportsSupports.com. Seven minutes, 44 seconds until the half. Xavier with six point lead and look, Red Storm. No one has made more threes in the Big East than the Red Storm, but they are 0 for 6 so far from distance. Six of nine though. With regular field goal. But the good news for Mullen is that you're still in it. And once those threes start to fall, that's when Xavier should be worried. Three seconds on the shot clock. The drive and it rims out. Witten Gooden shot. Guards, Levette and Pons still haven't gotten hot, and they're going to call Ellison with the elbow, the push off. And those type of turnovers, you know, they don't kill you right now, but then when you look up and you see, you know, where those, your fouls are starting to fall with seven minutes to play in the half, you start, it, then it starts to get herky jerky. It slows the game down. You got to tell your guys, look, clean it up a little bit. We need some momentum here. We're down. Makura checked back in and he just threw it away. You see me the steal. And they're going to call the foul on Quinton Gooden. His first. That was an early whistle. I mean, that what? whistle was right at half court. They took two or three more dribbles. Take another look at that. There's the steal, knock away. I guess maybe that was where the foul was. That's, that's a cheap. I should say the touch. Yeah, really. <laughs> cheap. The Big East, man. Uzzini knocks them both down. He's a sophomore out of Italy. For St. John's getting out rebounded by five or six. And they turned the ball over five times, only shooting 40%. They're still in this game. They've given up 12 points in the paint to Xavier, and they're still right there. Still waiting to make the first three. Xavier's second best rebounding squad in the conference. Ellison lost that one. Just too much in a confined spot. You really had no place to go. You know, Xavier wants you to do that, and they, they want it in Allison's hands. They just, because they understand that he has to come to them. He's more comfortable bringing the ball to them to try to score than he is, you know, like Hans or Levetta or, or Mussini even trying to shoot over the top of you. This is the sixth turnover for the Red Storm. Sumner probing. Oh, there's a little hook. And you see Chris Mullen was right on it, too. He was telling you, you got to call that one. That's the first for Sumner. I think that was an easy one, too. Right there. There it is. There's one. Did it again twice. <laughs> And travel on Bashir Ahmed, and man, this is turning into a turnover fest. Seven now for the Red Storm. And the turnovers are just coming because it's just too much one-on-one -on -one basketball, too much hero basketball. And not that these kids are thinking it's about them selfishly. They're just trying to get something going for their team. But the way you do it against Xavier's size and length is with the pass. You do not do it with the dribble. Kira, the three. 
No good. Rebound, Sumner. The drive up and in. Quentin Gooden, the freshman out of Kentucky. Good's been a nice little piece for Chris Mack. Coming along nicely, another solid outlet for his guys to kind of lean on if you need a bucket. Good defensively as well. You see the corner three, yes. And that's how you beat it. The passing. You don't have to do it on your own. Move the basketball. It really is an easy game. And St. John's has enough weapons from the outside. They got enough length, athleticism. Play together. He's got, you see, he's got seven points. How about Sumner? Knocks that thing down. He's got 11 Sumner has. Not a lot he can't do. Inside five minutes until the half. Levent running hook. Well, you hear that saying? Coaches always tell us, you know, we beat ourselves. We're beating ourselves. <laughs> St. John's is beating themselves right now. Gaston gave it up. Yusini drive rejected. Edmund Summer has been everywhere. Dropping dimes. This one to Makura. Second foul on Williams. It's one of the staples of what Chris Mack likes to do, chase you down, good block at your point guard. <laughs> Coming from behind, blocking that shot. And then McCure at the other end, their toughness. And they lose a lot of size when you think no Reynolds no far this season. But they're still a tough team. You know, they're not as big. They have their struggles in the paint at times, on the glass. Tell you what, Xavier's coming off that crosstown rivalry game against Cincinnati. And they got, they got out tough. They got really out tough. Not only on the boards, they got beat up in the post. And you, most of their big men were non existent yeah. in that game. Well, that's what Cincinnati does. That's their MO. Yeah. Nick Cronin, they, I oh. mean, they try to beat you up physically. Nick Cronin does such a great job every year there of getting the right type of player. The guys that will just give it up for their teammates. That's what every coach wants. Four minutes to the half. Here's Owens in the post. Pond, the three. And strong. Lovett now, one dribble, pull up, that one's strong. Rebound, Kaiser Gates. Lovett just a little flat on the jumper. No, not the arc that he normally gets, and you can see it. Long, but a little bit flat. Gooden goes up. Uh, never leave the ball. <laughs> Six-point lead for Xavier. Edmund Sumner, he's doing it at both ends. Mid-range jumper off the dribble. Xavier up six here at MSG. All right, Stone, appreciate it. Right now, 24th ranked Xavier. Six-point lead over St. John's to Red Storm as we take a look at the game summer, and it's really been ending the summer. It really hasn't. Chris Mack can say, listen, we haven't made a three-pointer either. So all the talk about St. John's, they're one of eight. Um, Max Group hasn't made a three either, and they're sometimes that's what happens on the road. You got to figure out ways to play around your inefficiencies, and that's what that's what they're doing. Thanks to guys like Edmund Sumner. Sumner is perfect from the field. He's five of five. Regular field goals, eleven points. It's definitely been an individual game, though, for both teams. Two assists for Xavier on eleven made field goals, and. St. John's not much better on the other side. They got three assists on seven made baskets. So probably more individual play than both coaches would want. But like I said, if you're Chris Mack, you're just trying to get a win on the road. That's what's important. However, you can get that done. 
You can see Red Storm has gone cold of late. Here's Levette off the screen. Sheer on Ned. Misses the three. Freshman against freshman there. Good and trapped. That was knocked away by Bashir Ahmed. See some of those freshman issues. I think once a lane opens up, you have to take it. Not always the case, especially when there's size underneath the basket waiting for you, like St. John's had on that play. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Blue Forced that one up. Kaiser Gates grabs the board. Here comes Blue again, this time, and Omar travels. Nine turnovers now. That's a great Zay. job by Owens. That, that's Owens just being in the area. You know, a big guy's there. I already had a block earlier. Picks the foot up a little bit, then dribbles. Good call by the official. It could be the shorts, too. Tariq Owens shorts, how they're folded up underneath. That. <laughs> yeah. You know? Very intimidated. <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes, 36 and a half. How Bill's handles by Pond. Wow. Lost it going up. Oh, a lot of contact there, mm -hmm. too. Young fella not, not getting any respect in there with the trees. Gaston from the post kicks it out. Three rolls in for Gwynton Gooden. And Xavier is on a 7-0 run. They've got their largest lead. It's double digits. It's 10 from the Garden. Welcome back, Xavier. Ten-point lead just before halftime, and Shamori doing everything he can gets hit there. And I tell you, you know, just like it's hard for teams to be consistent, it's hard for officials to be consistent too. But it's more important for them to be consistent on their calls. And then you see Xavier getting their first three of the game, but Shamori Prawn's doing a great job forcing the issue. There have been some some tic tacs earlier. You want the stripes to be consistent with their calls. That's all you ask for. Under two minutes till the half. Here's Ellison. The bet to three. Can't get it. Yeah, there's that one coming out of his hand just was almost like a knuckleball. And we've seen enough of his games to know when that ball's released, when it's going in or not. Red Storm, one for 10 from three. Sumner. That one knocked away. Sumner working on Ellison. In the lane. Kicks it out. The three by Kaiser Gates. No good. Got to give Ellison a lot of credit. Edmund Sumner trying to use that size. Ellison's about the same size as Sumner. It wasn't that easy. Had to kick it. How about that? Rashid Gaston picks up the foul. He's his third. And Ellison's one of those players, when you talk to Chris Mullen, that he just says kind of balances everything out. Doesn't take a lot of chances. You know, those the unwanted issues that you may have with some other players. Doesn't He's never really out of control. Just loves the way he's really coming into his own. Talked about his injury last year, trying to get back and try to figure out what his game was and who he was playing with. He's done a terrific job, Ellison, this season. Tyreek Jones checks in. Xavier, he'll play the last minute 20. Owens knocks down both those free throws. Red Storm needed that. You know, they started this game 6 of 12 from the field. They've gone 1 of 10 since. Looking for a five-second call. Here's Blewett. 
Sumner, the three. No, rebound, Owens. Under a minute till the half. Got away with one. Great stop behind the screen by Sumner. And Still no threes here. Yeah, those shots for Ellison, I think he's got to have his feet set a little bit more. He's not, and it's hard when you have guys like Levette and Pons and Mussini who can do that, pull up on a dime. That's still a part of Ellison's game. I think he's working on to develop. More of a standstill shooter. Just picked up his first personal. Ellison, of course, the son of Perk. Ellison played at Louisville, won a national championship his freshman or yeah, his freshman year. Never nervous, perfect. Different body types, too. Mm -hmm. uh, much taller and longer. First pick in that 89 draft. Beat that Duke team, right? Yeah. Johnny Dawkins led Duke team. Here on in. Three, corner pocket. St. John's is going to go in at halftime and say, listen, when we move the basketball, it's an easy game. Drive, draw, and kick instead of trying to do it on our own. Chris Mack is going to call a timeout. Set up the last play of the half. Red Storm down seven. Back here at the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden, St. John's going through some struggles, but this is how Chris Mullen wants them to play. You drive the ball, you draw a defender. It's one versus two over there, knock it down. It's an easy game, but you have to make it that way. I remember beginning of the season, you and I did a game of Carnesecca, and Chris Mullen said he showed him tape of basketball from the 50s, 60s, yeah. all the way up to today, and said, What's the, the theme here? It's passing. Yeah, you're Putting right. Together, moving yeah. the ball. That's all it is. It's hard to teach young players that, though, when they've come from all different parts of the world playing, learning the game individually. Final 10 seconds here. First half. Sumner, five seconds. That one off in time. Yeah, that's good. That's really good D by St. John's. Not allowing the over the top. Take a look at that clock at the middle top of your screen. I think they're thought they were going to put some time back on. Probably should have been 1.4. Looks like they're going to just let the clock go out. St. John's must have gotten that rebound, so they just let the clock expire. Well, that's the end of the first half. Score 32-25. Xavier, Rob Stone, Steve Lavin will be back with the Jeep Grand Cherokee halftime report right after this. We are in New York City. And nothing says NYC like the subway system here. And 24th ranked Xavier, they've got a seven point lead here at the half. Hello everyone, I'm Brian Custer alongside Donnie Marshall. You know when you look at this first half, especially for Xavier, because they need a win desperately. Mm. Haven't played well on the road. It's really been all about Evan Sumner. He has carried the team offensively. Got to lean on your horse if you're Chris Mack. He's done a great job both ends of the floor. Offensively, we know he's so special. Mid-range, long ball, can get to the rim. He's 6'6". Six, six. I, I just like the fact that he's out there doing a little bit of everything. He's not a one-dimensional player by any means. Starts the game with a nice post up here. A little facial over Owens, and then with the left hand, amphibious we call that I know some people call it ambidextrous <laughs> call it amphibious and then defensively Look at that. more special running the ball down great block and it really is a, a much needed win for Xavier in so many so many ways they're one and five on the road we've talked about that but to win in this building to get yourself ready I know we're about four or five weeks away yeah. but to get yourself ready for the biggest tournament in this building 
man, to get a win today would be special for Xavier. All right, let's take a look at the first half stats. Of course, they are brought to you by Jeep Grand Cherokee. And listen, neither team is really shooting the ball particularly well, especially from three. Look at Xavier's one of nine, Red Storm two of 12, but they are, and I'm talking about Xavier, killing the Red Storm on the boards. And both teams really turning it over a lot. Xavier in double digits, turnovers with 10. Red Storm have eight. We take a look at our leading scores, and really it is Sumner. He is the leader. Blew it. He's got six boards. You'd have to imagine that Mullen had two things to tell his guys. Play together, move the basketball. Only four assists in that first half. And not only that, you, you got to do it together, but you also have to take care of the basketball. Half the turnovers came from Levette and Ponce. And there they go. They move it. And Bashir Ahmed knocks down the three. Just get the ball from one side of the floor to the other. Force the defense to turn their heads. Then you have a play off the dribble or a catch and shoot. Inside. Tyreek Jones with the spin, couldn't finish. Look at this, you swing it, you're on the, the left side of the floor, a little handoff, swing, swing. Well, that ball swings four times, now the defense is not sure. Is the gonna put it down? What's he gonna do? But, but it, it's all set up by the pass. Jones picks up the foul, that's his first. They swing it again, on that from the same place, short. Trying to draw a foul. That's the time where you put it on the floor. You just made one, they get up into you, put it on the floor, go by it. Pons knocks it away. Here comes the Red Storm. Shamori. Yakwe. Yakwe's got three personals. Picked him up early in that first half. Yeah, he's their heart and soul is down low. Ahmed is their energy guy, so have to be aware of what you have and where you are on the floor. Oh, uh, here's Yakwe, and he just picked up his four. Uh, just talked about it. I mean, we, <laughs> the breath hadn't even come out of our mouths yet. And, you, know, you just have to know where you are on the floor. That's as a big, you take a look over your shoulder as you're catching the ball. See what's behind you, under control. And that, you know, that's gonna force Mullen to have some guys really step up. Owens is gonna have some extended minutes now. And Williams will be back in the game, but he's got two fouls as well. Yeah, how about that? There's a warning to Chris Mullen, a bench warning. And look at that face there. He's trying to figure out for what. <laughs> Here's the three by Blewett. Nothing but net. Yeah, just too much space. And that's a better shot for him. Wide open. Guys don't put their hands up. You got to let that thing go. He's got nine. He's coming off a 40-point performance against UC. That three no good. Trayvon Blue, it's such a special, special player. Field goal percentage is getting better, and it'll help when there's no one within eight feet of you. <laughs> that was an NBA three, but under control. Love him shooting that shot. He knocked down nine of them against Cincinnati. Ellison, drive, he's got it. I just love the, the, the confidence, the balance, the head on the shoulder that Ellison has right now, the way he's playing, not trying to be spectacular, just being solid. Wide open from the corner, nearly air ball with Malcolm Bernard. Wow. Looked like a lot of ball from our angle. But even if you do get a hand in there and it wasn't a foul, Makura had no one in front of him to block him out. That's Bonds in second. It's a 6 5 guy. Where? You know, it might have been a little on that left arm, but the work had already been done by Makura. No one was in front of him. It's just too easy. Kira has been relatively quiet as well. He's got six. I love him though. He's just one of those guys. He just he reminds me a little bit of myself as far as his his temperament as a college player. Got a pretty stroke. You, you hate to play 
against him, but you love when he's on your team. I mean, he's just one of those guys. He can get under your skin. Here's Ellison. Missed the jumper. Here comes Sumner. Bernard lays it in. It's a great look ahead. Lil Xavier gives that ball up, lets their wings go do the work. That's only their fifth assist of the game on 14 field goals. Strong move by Lavette. We go back and forth. Sumner kicks it out to Mikura. In and out. All oh, the putback by Jones. No. Gotta move the basketball. Look at this. He's at the free throw line. Throws it to under the other free throw line. That, that's what I'm, what I'm talking about earlier. Make your teammates better as a point guard. You know, you don't have to dribble the air out of the ball. Throw that thing up. Let them go to work. Great look by Sumner. O'Mara checks back in. Xavier. Eric Jones to have a seat. Owens had it knocked away. Yeah, I don't know what was was better, the catch or the pass. Ahmed pulls up, air ball. Pons is right there. On a heads up play by Shimori. Read the ball the whole way. That's what you're taught. As a rebounder in general, just never guess. Never take your eye off the basketball when it goes up. Sumner, top of the key, knocks down the three. Too much airspace right now for Xavier. They're really comfortable from behind the arc. We saw Blewett, no one within a couple of feet of him, and then there, Sumner. Just St. John's has to do a better job of closing down those gaps. Sumner's right on his season average at 14. He's the game's high score. <laughs> Cool night here in the city. It's warming up here inside the garden. Big East College Hoops on FS1 is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Xavier with an eight-point lead. And, hey, in case you missed it, Villanova beat Virginia earlier today at the buzzer. Hart, the drive. Look at DiVincenzo. Dante tips it in with point one on the clock. Double D with the soft hands. Yeah, I've seen him tip dunk a lot of those. If he tried to tip dunk that, it wouldn't have counted. Oh, man. How about the Cats? They remain atop the Big East standings, seven and two, now 20 and two overall. And do you know when you think about that senior class of Chris Josh Hart, Chris Jenkins, those guys have not lost back-to-back -back yeah. games in their entire career. Well, it's nice to see guys like Devin Chinjo stepping up. Owens oh, tried to attack the rim, draws the foul. You know, Chris Jenkins struggled today, only eight points. <laughs> guys are playing hard. Got to go finish strong. That's the third on J.P. Mikura. Rick Owens leads the conference in blocks. Richard, sophomore transfer from Tennessee. You know, to finish up that thought on Villanova, you know, you need those guys. You talk about a short bench, you know, seven guys that Jay Wright has available. My concern, if we haven't seen Phil Booth by now, I don't feel that he's going to be back. I mean, it's been a long time without Phil Booth. There's been nothing official. But if you're a Villanova fan, you have to be wondering, is he ever going to, is he going to play again this season? Because it's important. You right. need to lengthen that bench as much as you can if guys like Chris Jenkins or Josh Hart struggle. That's a great point. Sumner attacking the rim, draws the foul. That's the third on Tariq Owens. So Yakwe has Yakwe has four. Owens now has three. 
And the thing that stinks most about that is the game started almost like a finesse game, everything being called. And as the game progressed, it got more physical. The whistles kind of went away. And now Chris Mullen is, is in a tough spot. We saw Malcolm Bernard check in for Xavier. J.P. McCure, he sits down. He's got three. And St. John's is being aggressive. They're trying to force the issue as well. Just not hearing the whistles that way. Got to play through it. And he goes to reach in. Like we said in the first half, if you're a coach, all you want is for it to be consistent. And obviously, coaches want to get every single call, but I think in the end, you just want it to be a game that's consistently called that the officials aren't affecting what happens on the floor. Let the kids decide the outcome. Oh, that one went right between the hands of Tariq Owen. 11 turnovers now for St. John's. A great job by Xavier doubling that as far out as they could. Well, you got to meet the ball when your guards are in trouble. You got to come to the ball to get them out of out of harm's way. Five minutes gone here. Just wraps the rim. That's what we talk about making guys better. You know, Amara earlier travel. Got a shot block there, just wide open because Edmund Summer stretched him out. Ellison drives. And short, taken away by Sumner. Blew it. Lays it up and in. Largest lead. Edna Summers. Sumner is doing everything. Oh, this is a great job. String him out. Sumner, string him out. Has a big, the little no look to Amara down low. Xavier in control. Well, this week it is back to back Big East doubleheaders on FS1. Tuesday, Creighton meets Butler. Then Georgetown faces DePaul. Then on Wednesday, Nova travels to Providence to take on the Friars. The Seton Hall battles Xavier. Big East basketball doubleheaders Tuesday, Wednesday. Right here on FS1. Xavier has figured out how to turn it around quickly. Create your offense with your defense. I know it's an old saying, but Xavier, they have the horses to get out and do that. Shoot 50% in this half. And give me more cowbell. You gotta more have more cowbell if you're the Red Storm. I thought that was our producer, Fran Morrison, <laughs> taking a break from the truck. He's got the same haircut, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, that is tremendous. <laughs> Owens, the jumper, got it. Nice answer coming out of a timeout. More cowbell. And, and that, that right there is exactly what they want from Tariq Owens, a mid-range jumper. Not what we saw earlier, the yeah. pull-up under duress. Yes. Game's hard enough as it is. This is the man you got to corral there. Omara inside, turns, no. And he commits the personal. Omara still a work in progress a little bit for this, the style that Chris Mack wants to play, but he's going to be a, a big piece for them down the stretch. He gives them that size, and he knows how to play. Those are, but these fouls over the back and then that, Far away from the basket, those are silly fouls. Yeah. That's why I talk about a, a, a work in progress. He's got two quick ones. Not just about playing, you got to think your way around the game. Here's Musini. No, Ahmed crashes the boards. Hans battling with the trees. Here's the freshman Gooden. Bernard, Amara, ball fake. Gets Ahmed in the air. That's the third on Mashir Ahmed. Amara has to thank his teammates. I mean, he is wide open from the over help on the, the extra dribble. Nice little shot fake there. 
one gets hurt, a scary time you get up in the air like that. Sophomore Kaiser Gates will come in and Edmund Sumner will have a break. Bernard lost it. Ellison to Pons. Now here comes some pressure. A little token pressure by St. John. First pass break points of the game for St. John's. You're going to need more of those to get those hands in the passing lanes. Oh, how about that? Easy, easy. Too easy. Yusini, the three from the corner, no. Seconds on the shot clock for Xavier. The freshman tried to drop it inside, but Bernard picks it up. They're going to call a kickball. You hear coaches say it all the time. You'll earn the ball back if you get to the floor first. <laughs> That's exactly what happened there. Bernard, first uniform, first black jersey on the floor. Digs it out. He played eight minutes, 12 left in the game. Another near turnover. Matura drives, lays it up and in. He's got nine. Crafty little player, man. Quiet nine, too. Musketeers are pounding. Red Storm in the paint. Ten more points in the paint for Xavier. Getting it any way they want. Xavier here, keeping the dribble alive. JP! Welcome back to Madison Square Garden. Xavier, you can see here with a 12-point lead. And we talked about guard play, and we've certainly seen it, especially from Xavier. Their guards, Edmund Sumner and Trayvon Blewett, both in double figures. He's like a young Brian Custer. Yes, Edmund he is. Sumner can do it all. He can do that thing. I mean, there, there's really nothing he can't do. Pass. Feels free to, to knock it down from top. They're getting guys involved. He's doing what everyone expects him to do. Get his teammates involved and make them better. We take a look at the backcourt. How about this? Blewett and Sumner both in double figures. And Levette and Pons. Pons with 11, but Levette with just four. The bigger issue for Xavier is J.P. Mercura. He's got four personals. And he is their heart and soul. And Chris Mack knows that. It's an extension of Chris Mack with that toughness, strong will. Darian Williams checks in, goes right to work. Here's Sumner again. Blew it. Got it. Another assist for Sumner. Oh, it's what they do. You know, when Sumner's not hurting you, turning the corner, scoring, he's finding. Trayvon blew it. Amen. Oh, Knocks down the lead, the three. Knocks the lead back down to ten. Xavier just using as much clock as possible. They have finishers. Late clock finishers. Another one. How about Sumner? Just probes, probes, finds an open man. Now he draws so much attention because the way he's turning the corner, guys have to step up. Nice little bounce pass back to Blewett. In a lot of space, almost too much space. 
You gotta know that scouting report. I know they didn't win, but you gotta think about what Blue did that last game against Cincinnati. Ashton knocks down that first free throw. Sumner's got six assists. He averages five a game. He's third in the Big East in assists. We talked about Sumner when he was on everyone's radar initially about being the 6'5, 6'6 kid, long, had to wait a season to, to play, got better, but now he's, his feel for the game is what's most impressive to me this season. Lead is 12. We've got 10 minutes left in this one. St. John's has not led. Lovett tried to scoop it up and in. Xavier's done a great job on him. Their size has really affected what he's trying to do. Oh, Blue, it is getting warm. There's gotta be one guy you find. <laughs> you he had nine threes against right. UC. That's the one guy you have to know. If he sneaks behind you, it's curtains. I mean, he, a great job here. The size forcing Levette into a tough play. And then throw it ahead once you see him. <laughs> mm. I mean, he got down there really quickly. Yes, the recovery was just too late once he had it in his hands. He's hot. Blue is now three of five from beyond the arc. He's got 17. He's now the game's high scorer. And, you know, look at what Xavier has done from the first half compared to now to the second half. Both teams have shot it better. Musketeers, man. Yeah, the, the eight assists this half is what's the most impressive. Yeah. When you look at Xavier's side of that box score, Chris Mack has always been one of those coaches that you go in at halftime, if the team needs energy, they're not playing the right way, and they come out and they just click. Whatever he says, or I should say however he says it, his team gets it. Ellison inside the Williams and the basket and one for Williams. This is just what they're lacking. We talk about the consistency. This play worked in the first half, but they only went to it about three or four times. That that pick and slip or that pick and roll to the block. I need more of that. You know, when that ball goes east to west, sideline to sideline, it's easy to defend. You put the pressure on the D when you're going north to south. Here's Blewett. Gates. In and out. Rebound by Gaston. And they say he walked. 13th turnover. For Xavier. St. John's, you're getting into some an area of the game where you have to have some sense of urgency. And that's a big bucket. Yeah, big bucket for Levette and St. John's. He's got seven. Sumner. Another dime. Gaston can't finish though. Ellison. No. Here comes Owens. How about Owens? Just a terrific play here. The drive and kick. You got to go north to south. Make the defense turn their head. That's what made that shot. And then the block by Owens again. And then he runs down and hustles for an offensive rebound. This last 30 to 40 seconds or so for St. John's has been what Chris Mullins wanted the entire game. Tyree Jones comes in because that's the fourth personal on Rashid Gaston. He'll have a seat. Love when a big can get up to the foul line and has confidence to knock him down. I, I think you just have to get him some shorter shorts. I mean, he's folding them under because they're too long. 
It's a 7-0 run. Listen to your players. And the lead is just eight now. At one point, it was 14. Inside, I thought he took an extra step. And Tyreek Jones throws it away. How about this crowd? Now well, they're into it now. Tell you what. St. John's can't say there's no energy in this building. <laughs> we know it's a special place. Lovett. No. Kaiser Gates pulls down the board. That's right, you got to play smart. You don't need that foul. You back up. You've done your job. Get back and defend again. Now what happens is you take the crowd right out of it with the foul. It takes the momentum away. And that foul's on Shamori Pons, his third. Like it a little full court pressure, speed the game up a little bit. There's the trap on Blewett. They got him cornered. Bernard gets it across. Good job by St. John's. Only 15 seconds as Xavier starts their offensive set. And eight minutes left in the game. Sumner, the jumper from the foul line. Strong. Gates is still there. Sophomores come up with two. Big offensive rebound. Here's Sumner. That was knocked away. Blew it. The three. And there's Gates again. Missed the putback. We get a tie up. The possession will stay with Xavier. Marcus Lovett just says, look, let's get into this. The lead is eight for the Musketeers. Third. That's Tyreek Jones' third foul. Rasheed Gaston will check back in. 43 fouls have been called here tonight. I hate it. I'm sorry. There's no better way to say it. I want the kids to figure out how to win or lose the game, not the officials. Remember, you're down a ball handler, a very good ball handler. And now someone else has to step up, but you got to make the, the safe play. You can't handle the ball in front of quick guards with quick hands. Sumner had seven assists. 16 turnovers for Xavier, and someone in the audience threw a little, little plastic basketball on the court. The, oh, right, that, those are the ones that you could dunk, right? That's the... <laughs> So that's what you, you always told me that you could get up and dunk the ball. Those, those, that was what you're talking about. That's messed up. So he lifts me up in the first half, and then hey. just brings me down <laughs> in the second half. You see what I'm saying? I mean, ooh, we we're trying to. It's a balancing act, you <laughs> man. I'm just trying to find the middle here. <laughs> and the seriousness of that situation is, you know, one of these type things happens again. It's St. John's who will get penalized. Yeah. With the technical foul. So they just made the announcement. Skip pass. DePaz. Another foul. That one on Malcolm Bernard. His third. Bernard just a step slow. That should have been a steal. There was a lot of air under that ball. But you had the right guy on the receiving end of it to catch it and go. Another opportunity for the Red Storm to chip away with this lead with the clock stop. Oh, and Pons misses. Sumner went down with the injury. Makura 
Takes it the length, misses the layup. Ellison, pull up. Williams got it. Tips it back in. 8 0 run for the Red Storm. And Chris Mack has seen enough. His lead has been cut to four. And that 8 0 run has come in under a minute. That's what's most important about that run is that St. John's has done it very quickly. And the Johnnies have done it on both ends. There, McCure trying to draw some contact. Good job by Williams controlling his body and not fouling, and then running to the other end. Love when Biggs make a good play at one end and finish it up at the other end. And how can you not love this? St. John's bench. Big run here for the Red Storm. An 8-0 run again ever since Edmund Sumner went down with that knee injury. And you said that. You said if you're Xavier, who's going to step up for you? Yeah, and what we, what does it do to you emotionally? You know, can you lift up and say, let's win this for him? He's, he's in the locker room. We, we don't know what's wrong with him yet. Let's just play basketball. Let's, let's continue to play hard and play well. But, I mean, he's your leader. It's hard not to think about him. And St. John's has really done a great job of taking advantage. Here's the freshman, Gooden. How about that? Right off of Bernard. He drops it out of bounds. And it was a good pass. You just have to catch it with two hands. Now, Bernard, I don't think, was ready for it. Put one hand up, and it wasn't quite all the way open. Punched that ball out of bounds. 17 turnovers by Xavier. Here's Ellison. Drives the baseline. Picks up the foul. That one unblew it. Well, these are those games that Mullen talked about against Providence. Our maturity level. Growing together. You know, coming back. One thing to play well individually, but it's it lasts longer when you do it as a team and you can come back from being down. Lead is now three for Xavier. And here's the foul trouble. Ten players with three or more. Yakwe Owens, Williams with four, and Gaston McCuro with four. St. John's has done it basically in the second half without Yakwe. And a steal by Levesque. And Gooden had the foul in the freshman. They've left the ball handling duties to a freshman. They're like sharks, it's like blood in the water. They know if a guy's not confident with his ball handling, you gotta attack him. That's exactly what Levette does. Levette missed two crucial ones last time and just missed that one. In the last free throw minute. shooters too, Cus. Yeah, man, he 83%. <laughs> Here in the last minute, Xavier has turned this ball over three times. He gets one of them. 10-0 run now for the oh. Red Storm. Hurts your momentum a little bit, but you, you got to let a guy run. You know, you, you're fighting the guy, LeVette just... He holds good, and you got to let him get to his spot. You want him to run to that corner anyway, so you can trap, trap him. him. Exactly. You don't want to fight him too much. Here's good, and here's the freshman. Knocks it down. This is the first point Musketeers have put up since Subner went down with that injury. Four. Need some good basketball here. No hero ball. 
Stay with your principles. Pause. Drives. Another foul. It was a good job. The block was cleared out by Owens. That gave Pons a straight line to the rim. Malcolm Bernard has got four fouls now for Xavier. This is the man you want at the line for the Red Storm. Seven of eight. Two. 50 free throws in this game. <laughs> Four minutes left. Now that reminds me of Big East basketball. Yes. A hundred years ago when I played. <laughs> you gotta grind it out. Yeah, too. Gaston in the post. Ten seconds on the shotgun. Oh. Uses the left hand. Such a great move, patience. Love that jump hook. He's got four points. 3.30 left in the game. Lovett lost it right off his thigh. Oh, I thought he got tripped. Love it. Clear out. This is how you keep the crowd quiet. Only four points, but... None louder than that. Getting ready for a big finish here in New York City. 68-72. Clinging to a four-point lead. In case you're just joining us, this was the biggest play so far of the game with six minutes left. Edmund Sumner went down, got the basket, but injured his left knee. Had to be helped off the court. They carried him back to the dressing room. And Xavier has been clinging to their lead to that point. Let's go back to when we talked about some of the keys to success. Well, Xavier's done that. You see the rebound margin there, throwing their 15 offensive rebounds. And St. John's, I mean, the numbers say it all. That you play together, good things happen, but defensively they've really stepped it up since Edmund Sumner's exit. Yep. Four-point lead. The Red Storm has never led in this game. Blew it. Makes it off the glass. Love how he just makes you slow down and play at his pace. He's got 19. Size helps you do that. Three minutes left in the game. Red Storm coming off a big victory at Providence. They've won two of three. The victory in Providence, just their fourth in 15 years. As Pons lays it in. He's got 18. It's really going to come down to who can stop Shamori Pons for Xavier. Chris Mon, I'm sure, is going to get him into a lot of pick and roll. These next two and a half minutes. <laughs> That'll be the third on Ellison. I think Malik Ellison wanted a push off. The, the freshman will go to the line. He's just a 50% free throw shooter, but he has stroked him tonight. No better time than yeah. now to show your medal. Hey, show he what you made of. Like a senior, didn't he? <laughs> He's got 13. Averages just two a game. Love that. That was way too strong. And, and I don't really care for it. I would love maybe a little high ball screen, give him a little bit more space. I know he's a prolific scorer one on one. Needed a bucket there. Good. That spins the freshman in the lane. 
Guys go down, it gives you an opportunity to step up for your team. He's done that from the foul line and then a big bucket in the paint. A couple things set this up. The ability to handle the ball, your confidence, and then your body control. Spinning, knowing where you are on the floor at all times. Oh, crossover, big steps up, inside out spin. You asked, you said, who's going to step up? Your freshman is. There he is. Up. Oh. Man, the Red Storm have missed some crucial free throws here in the second half. I mean, I hate to say it. But there have been 50 fouls called in this game. 5-0. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just one of two by Pons. Seven-point lead. Takira. The blue it. Ten seconds on the shot clock now. Good. Kicks it out. Bernard's wide open. The three's no good. Here comes Ellison. Got to go. And they're going to call a block. That's a tough play. You had Shimori Pons wide open on the left wing. I mean, there was no one within 15 feet of him. Just needed a little bit more vision of what is going on around you besides the basket. You always know where the basket is. <laughs> you know, you don't have to stare at it. Knowing where your teammates is is what's important in this stage of the game. Red Storm, 13 of 20 here at the free throw line in the second half. Ellison knocks that one down. That foul was on the freshman Gooden. That's his fourth. Chris Max is going to call a timeout. As we take a look at what the Red Storm is facing, they will be right back here at the Garden. They will take on a team that can stroke it, and when they're hot, the Golden Eagles can put up some points, especially from three. And then you go to Philly, Villanova. It gets easier from there, huh? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll hope. I hope they bring the board Woo. with them when they go take on Seton Hall. And then you got Butler and you got Marquette again. An easy one in Hinkle. Easy one. Is that the would that would be at the pavilion, the Villanova game? Yeah. Yeah. An easy one at the Bradley Center of Marquette. Yeah. My good. Welcome to life. The end of the <laughs> Big East Conference play. Isn't that the truth? Woo. Now Xavier. They will go back home to Cincy and take on Seton Hall. I like their schedule. Oh, um, and then you got Creighton. Seriously, they're all joking aside. Yeah, DePaul, Villanova, and then Providence. I mean, Creighton is searching. You know, they're trying to figure it out without Mo Watson. DePaul struggling. And then you have a chance that you know Chris Mack's team's going to get up for against Villanova. That's a great schedule for, for Xavier. And the issue for them is just how serious that knee in right is for Edmund, Edmund Sumner. Lewis will bring it up. Now you got to defend. A minute. Left in this game. No silly fouls right now. Five point lead. Five on the shot clock. Blew it. Gave him space in and out. And big rebound by Bernard. That is a 16th offensive rebound. Chris Mullen is going to look back at this game and say, We gave Xavier 16 extra opportunities in this game. Yep. And Tariq Owens just Boy. fouled out. Oh. He played hard. He was a difference. Did a great job changing shots, blocking shots. Four, four blocks today. And, and and probably changed another three or four. Yep. The 
thing Chris Mullen even told this before the game is I love about him he's so versatile he can I can he can play in the post yeah. I can play a three he can he can do it all for you he just has to figure out when he's not this close to the basket doing that how to guard guys great weak side help another surprising a guy from behind Sometimes coaches have more confidence in their and belief in their players than the actual player does and that's a part of what Tariq Owens is gonna have to figure out. He's got to guard some guys away from the basket as well. Williams, instead of grabbing it, tipped it and Xavier nearly came up with it. Well, obviously, if you're St. John's, you need something quick. Can't take any time getting up the floor. And for Xavier, defend with your feet. No silly fouls. We're going to call that foul on the floor as Pons drove. It should be in his hands. You know, you get inside of two minutes. And it's a five six point game the, the ball should be in his hands every single time And I think he makes the right decision not not that he's gonna shoot it every time But he's gonna put enough pressure on the defense and make the right decision that it gives you a better opportunity to, to get a bucket late Kaiser gate picked up his third foul He's gonna have a seat She Gaston will check back in Gaston's got four this is the 60th free throw of the game here. How many fouls we've had? Unbelievable. I'll tell you what, though, if you're an official, you do not want to be a part of a game that there's been 60 free throws. I guarantee you that. 30 seconds left to play now. Crowd wants them to foul. You got a foul. He fouled him. It's interesting because he fouled him right in front of the official on men, and there was no call. They were breathing on guys <laughs> right to start the, the game, and they were blowing the whistles. <laughs> what is happening? I know I'm going to get a lot of text messages. I got a lot of buddies who are NBA officials in college. I'm sorry. You, you guys even have a bad night, man. I mean, come on. These kids work their tails off. The coaches do such a good job of preparing for games, and then you. Oh. Lewin knocks that one down. I think they called a foul on you for bumping me in the first half. <laughs> man, oh man. He misses that second one. So the lead is five, 24 seconds left. Got to get it up quick. Yep. See if he pulls the three. No, you get a quick two. He does. Smart play. Got to get something quick, whatever it is. He's got 23 points. Pons does. He's the game's high score. So a three-point lead here for Xavier, so I'm sure. You're saying, John, you can put the press on, try to get you a quick steal. Yeah, and if you can't get it in the first two, three seconds, I think you got to take take one. And, and, and it really, you can't you can't be picky on who you foul. Want to remind you, this week it is back to back Big East doubleheaders on FS1. Hey, Tuesday, Great meets Butler. Georgetown faces DePaul. Then on a Wednesday, Villanova travels to Providence to take on the Friars. Seton Hall takes on Xavier Big East basketball doubleheaders Tuesday, Wednesday. It's all here. Tell you what, on FS1. Wednesday, that Villanova and Providence, I'm excited about that. It's hard to play in the dunk. I mean, you, Providence knows their fans just understand the yeah. game. They're into the game. There's no, you know, you go to some arenas, not MSG, but some arenas where fans 
are sitting reading a book on the sidelines at Providence man I mean they would they will criticize they will tell you to your face if you're not into the game you're right about that man Lee and those boys they play and, tough there and hey you know St. John's and, and Mully even told us before the game he said keep in mind as, when you look at us as a as a team just our fourth win there in 15 years it's a tough building man I'm telling you wow Eddie Cooley knows how to get his guys up to yeah. that Villanova that's, that's not a cakewalk that'll be a, a, an awesome game to see Villanova at Providence Jamari Pons has got 23 we've got 17 seconds left in this one and Xavier with a three-point lead there's the foul you talk about by Ellison he's got four Hero will go to the line. He's five of six so far tonight. And I don't. I mean, he's a terrific free throw shooter. I don't care if he was a, a 52.4 percent free throw shooter. He's just tough, mentally tough. You want him at the foul line if you're Chris Mack. You nailed it. He knocks that Man. one down. He's got 14. That one's strong. St. John Ball. I think Chris Mack wants the officials to look at it. Yeah. 12.9 to go. Take a look. And if nothing else, you get a chance to, to set your guys up yep. for what you're going to do. You saw a Corbett and Gary Prager have a discussion. Hey, let's take a look at this again. Going on the floor is St. John Ball. That is being reviewed. Take another look. And they say it is indeed Red Storm basketball. But it's smart by Chris Mack to say, take a look. You get, you get a free timeout. Ten seconds. Pons. Goes again, missed the layup that time. Oh, that one hurt. Not their night. They battled back. Xavier led by as many as 15. Red Storm certainly battled back here. Freshman misses that one and Xavier has let this one from wire to wire. Have you ever done an NBA game? Have not. This is as, this is as long as they last. Yeah. Two and a half hours. <laughs> 222 we're at. Uh, Hope you don't have a train to catch. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the final. So Xavier gets a much needed road victory. They will go to 15 and 5 and Red Storm now dropped the 10 and 13. Xavier wins this one 82 to 77. I'm Brian Cust along the wall inside Donnie Marshall. We'll now take you to inside the Big East. So long from the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden.